Give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> I got it. One sec. Okay, we're good. <gasps> ready? 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 Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Inky Tiger here, coming at you live from the fresh coast. Oh yeah. Alright, I've humiliated myself enough for one day. No, I haven't. Let's keep the video going. So for this past week or so, I've been kind of um, bouncing around with my commute, my job, um, a couple different projects that I've been working on again. Uh, I finished uh, a comic page that I was collaborating with someone on. I'm almost done with a commission that I've been working on. I think I've still been posting a bit of fan art here and there. My Voltron fans, where are you at? Season five, huh? Huh? I think maybe this would be a good thing to explain for other artists to relate to. I think the reason that I've gotten so into drawing that fan art recently is because um, for me it was kind of a thing where I was going back to my roots essentially. Like as a kid I was, I was growing up with uh, Avatar The Last Airbender series and that was like some groundbreaking, mind-blowing stuff. Like right around when a lot of us started taking drawing seriously, at least my friends and I. And um, the show... It was a game changer for animation in America, I think, um, because it was, it had a lot of roots in anime, I want to say, but the storytelling was very, I guess, westernized? I, I don't know if there's a better way to put it, but um, it, it definitely took stylistic elements from anime, but it took a lot of story construction from more western storytelling, I guess. Maybe it's not western, but it, it's just a good story, dang it. Brian Konietzko and... Michael DiMartino, I believe. They were kind of the creators of the show and they came up with that really specific style and the whole concept. And I was really taken with that as a kid. And at first, I don't think the style necessarily influenced my style. Definitely not consciously. Uh, I think my style leaned more toward, um, I wanna say Pokemon, honestly. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but <laughs> that's how it was. And. Uh, I don't think I really started to take notice of that particular art style until maybe seventh grade. So it was a good couple years. I want to say I started really paying attention like season two and getting into the story back in season two. And that's when I think I unconsciously started kind of incorporating that style into mine, particularly the eyes, because I, uh, I don't know, you know, that show style in particular, it just takes uh, elements of uh, Eastern animation and Western animation, like both good things, I guess, where uh, they use like the Western squash and stretch kind of methodologies, but they use like, more Eastern designs with maybe slightly more Western eyes instead of the like, shiny, sparkly, gigantic anime eyes. Although Western animation seems to be doing like only that nowadays, if you look at every character design of a 3D female character anywhere. I'm not salty about it, but no, Avatar did this thing where it had like the best of both worlds, especially with its character designs. You had these really unique character designs that were also believable, I guess, and they had believable movements. So uh, fast forward, it's the end of the series, and I'm starting to actually actively incorporate that style into my work in high school, and that's around the time end of high school, early college, that Legend of Korra is coming out. That was a big deal. Like, that was really cool having that same world, but a more, I guess, mature storyline. It's not that the last Airbender storyline was not complex and there weren't mature themes. Because there were, there's some pretty serious, uh, heavy things in there. Legend of Korra kind of took it one step further. There was also a bit of world building, like there was, um, this big technological revolution, so it was a lot more of a steampunk setting. The character designs were a bit different in that they were a lot older than the original gang, as we called it. But yeah, I remember high school, college, particularly falling in love with these character designs, especially Korra. Like, at the time, it was so groundbreaking to have a female lead in kind of such a fantastical role. I remember poring over all sorts of character design studies just looking at all these height charts of her, and Asami, and Olin, and Mako, and checking out all of their poses and fight scenes, and paying really close attention to these, and like copying them, and trying to learn poses from them. And my style since then has taken a lot of inspiration from Legend of Korra. Fast forward, <laughs> finally, to Voltron Legendary Defender, which, it's the same showrunners, it's, it, well, 
sort of. It's not the old creators uh, break off doing their own thing now. I think they're mostly invested in the comics, I wanna say. But here's to hoping they start a new series. Yeah, but no, the showrunners, Lauren Montgomery and Joaquin Dos Santos, and then the directors of some of the episodes, I can only think of Eugene Lee and Steve Ahn right now. Steve Ahn, you're my hero. Yeah, no, those designs are really similar. They're a bit more anime for my taste, but um, honestly, I'm here for the story, man. It's so good. Fast forward to now. Um, I'm only just starting to watch animated shows again and actually having some time for that and studying them and studying character designs and things. So imagine my surprise seeing Voltron of all things with these really similar designs and <laughs> nice surprise is also one of my favorite voice actors is in it. Um, I kind of freaked out when I heard his voice because I'm like, oh my god, you sound older because I, I heard him first in Spectacular Spider-Man. Honestly, I think it's one of the best Spider-Man shows that's ever been animated. If, I don't know if there's any live action ones, but there shouldn't be because this is the end-all be-all for me. Like, it's so good. If, if not for just the sheer quipping power of this actor, but um, no, Josh Keaton was actually uh, Spider-Man in Spectacular Spider-Man, and he's uh, Shiro in Voltron Legendary Defender. So <laughs> fast forward to me watching this for the first time. And I hear this familiar voice and it's like, oh my god, it's him. What is he doing here? And so I had to watch the rest of it, obviously. He's, he's one of my favorite actors, I'm sorry. It's just, it's been like that since like 2012, so. <laughs> I don't know, man. Can't do anything about it. Okay, so I got into it because it was an animated show and then I stayed for Josh Keaton, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> jokes aside, the style actually got me really excited into that's not, that's not a sentence. Watching the show and seeing that style and seeing such excellent animation with such a good story and good acting all coming together, that was hugely inspiring to me in a way that it hasn't been since, uh, I would say Legend of Korra or even How to Train Your Dragon, which are also really big inspirations for me. Especially How to Train Your Dragon. <sighs> Anyways, that show, really got me back into art. It was really inspiring. Um, it, how do I describe it? Before, I was obviously still creating, maybe not quite to the level that I am right now, but um, seeing a show with so many good elements and with such a, I guess, familiar style or the, with a style that was so similar to the ones that have inspired me, um, I think that's what really kind of lit a fire under me and said like, hey, you love this thing, you need to chase this thing, you need to keep doing this thing until you can, I don't know, stop breathing I guess. That did not come out right. <laughs> Let me rephrase. Uh, hmm. I have a dark sense of humor. <laughs> I guess yeah, that familiar style being done so well was really inspiring and motivating to me to start creating more and uh, working on my own stories. So yeah, it was kind of like a, a feeling of going back to my roots, I guess. Looking at the things that made me originally want to go into this field and looking at the stories that really inspired me as a kid and finding new stories with similar themes and uh, designs, I guess. I don't know, long story short, I was inspired by stuff that I cared about and still care about and new stuff that I care about now. And I think what I'm trying to say in a really long, tangential way, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and dive into some more things that used to inspire me, or at least like old character designers or storyboard artists. Like Joanne Matt was a huge inspiration for me. Uh, her work in How to Train Your Dragon, Rise of the Guardians, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, always comes back to that show. She's super inspirational to me. I think she's working on Troll Hunters now, otherwise she'd probably be on Voltron. Which... <sighs> they're so good, you guys. They're so good. I think I'm gonna go back to some of my roots as an artist as I'm working on my comics and writing my stories because I think that will help remind me why I'm doing this and I guess one, serve as motivation, but two, to inspire me to tell these stories because I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure if you're watching this that you have the same feeling. 
I have stories to tell, and I know they can be good, and I know that they can have a really good impact on people. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make those stories, and it doesn't really matter to me if it's going to be with a big studio and a big budget production film or whatever, because that's not the reason I'm making these stories. I guess I'm doing it a tiny bit for myself, you know, as a way to make sense of the world, I guess. That's kind of what stories have always been, but also to serve as a story for others, to draw from experience, to feel like they can relate to someone they feel affirmed, I guess. Because to me, that's um, motivating, affirming, and inspiring. I feel like those are the most important things that a story can do. And they can do it, and you can do it, and I can do it. We just have to do it. <laughs> that's the hard part. It's simple, but it's not easy. So, again, coming back, I'm going to go back to my roots and find what inspired me and what will inspire me in my future stories. And I think what I'll do is I'll come back in a week, say what I found, and I challenge you to figure out who inspires you. Any artists, uh, regular, that's not, that's not right, no. Tell me in the comments below who inspires you, what inspires you, even better, what motivated you in the first place. And I'll feature the ones I like in my next video. I think I already said this, but yeah, I'm gonna look at the artists who inspired me, um, kind of do a deep dive into why they inspired me, uh, figure out how that'll relate to the stories that I'm telling currently and the stuff that I'm working on now. I think I'll talk about that in my next video, so that forces me to <laughs> make another video, and hopefully it won't suck or be boring. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have a comment or a question, leave it in the comment section. And don't forget to write about any artists, people, places, or things that have inspired you in the past and could possibly inspire you again into working on some new projects. Sparkle fingers. But yeah, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.